Hello friends, uh, let us continue our lecture on uh, primary amenorrhea. In our last class, we have learnt about the primary amenorrhea with normal secondary sexual characters. Here we are going to learn about the primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characters. Whenever the secondary sexual characters are absent, it surely states that here the secondary sexual characters are mainly due to estrogen. So there is some problem in the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis or there may be problem in the ovary. So this uh, axis problem whenever there is there that can lead to the absent secondary sexual characters. So the first one is uh, this, uh, this is again divided into normal height and short stature. So in the normal height we are going to learn about the first deficient, the first problem that is isolated GnRH deficiency. So whenever there is no GnRH so there is no activation of pituitary. So because pituitary is not activated, so there is no LHFSH and thus no response. Okay. Um, here only GnRH is deficient, whereas growth hormone is normal. As a result, height is normal. Okay. The second type is XY or XX gonadal dysgenesis. So the a karyotype may be XY or XX, but the main problem is gonads are not dysgenesis, not developed properly. Maybe estrogen or sorry, maybe testis or maybe ovary, but their gonads are not pro formed properly. As a result, there won't be any uh, Wolfian duct structures if it's a male, and in Mullerian structures may be present if it's female, but the gonads are not form properly and as a result there will be no ovulation. So there is FSH is increased here. Okay. Uh, how are you going to diagnose it? Diagnosis is by phenotyping. So the third one is Turner's mosaic. It is similar to the Turner syndrome which we are going to deal in few minutes. But here the Turner's uh, in Turner's mosaic there is 45 XO or 46 XX. That is some cells have 45 XO and some other cells will have 45, 46 XX. In such state we call it as Turner's mosaic. So here uh, uh, the ovaries will have few follicles and as a result ovulation and estrogen production will be very very less. Okay, It is similar to Turner syndrome but the severity of the syndrome is less compared to Turner uh, syndrome. Now these are the main uh, 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 classification for normal height. If there is short stature, if there is short stature first you will have to see about Turner's syndrome. So what happens in Turner's syndrome? In Turner's syndrome, the um, child has 45 XO chromosome. So, and this is the most common cause of primary amenorrhea. Okay, this is important to learn. It is most common cause of primary amenorrhea. And there is absence of X chromosome. Uh, one X chromosome. As a result, the phenotype is 45. XO. So because there is absence of one X chromosome, the follicles which are there in the ovary, though, though these follicles will develop normally up to 20 weeks. So 20 weeks they are normal. And after 20 weeks the follicles become atretic. And then the ovary becomes streak. I mean fibrous stand, ovary becomes atrophic and it forms a fibrous streak. So later they become atretic and finally ovary is like a fibrotic uh, strand. So this is called as streak gonad. Okay, so these are the different, uh, this is how it happens. So because there is streak gonad, so there is no ovary, so there is no estrogen. Okay, because there is no estrogen, there are um, uh, no secondary sexual characters. No secondary sexual characters. And because there is no estrogen, this will activate pituitary and there is 
increased fsh okay this is one thing which you have to remember so how is the child what are the clinical features of the child the clinical features uh, okay what are the clinical features number 1 the child may have high arched palate and then there can be webbing of neck there can be heart anomalies cardiac anomalies okay in the cardiac anomalies most commonly there is coarctation of aorta it's important coarctation of aorta okay uh, there is absent breast development and there is also widely spaced nipples if you see the nipples are widely spaced placed widely placed nipples okay and there is here there is wide carrying angle this is also important there is wide carrying angle okay no secondary sexual character so no pubic hair there can be edema can be seen so these are the different uh, clinical features which are seen so how are you going to diagnose diagnosis the best diagnosis is karyotyping okay how are you going to treat it treatment you will have to give cyclical estrogen and progesterone therapy this will promote feminization and this will also cause uh, the appearance of secondary sexual characters and this will promote prevent osteoporosis so we give cyclical estrogen and progesterone okay and then we'll have to create an artificial vagina this artificial vagina will help in sexual function and growth hormone is given to promote growth and if the if she wants to get pregnant then pregnancy can uh, can be tried with donor egg with ivf so this these are the major things so pregnancy by donor egg okay so this is about the turner syndrome now the other causes as i have said they can be pituitary problems in pituitary ovarian axis i don't want to write it again but i would like to show you show to you the other sir hypothalamo pituitary causes it, in hypothalamo pituitary causes it can be congenital in that there is deficiency of multiple hormones or it can be acquired where there is infection trauma tumors or empty cell syndrome which will destroy the pituitary and hypothalamus creating uh, or leading to growth hormone deficiencies and also the gonadotropin releasing hormone fs fsh and lh deficiencies thus leading to primary amenorrhea okay so these are the this is about primary amenorrhea now how are you going to diagnose a child with primary amenorrhea first you'll have to see about the symptoms uh, once there is primary amenorrhea you'll have to see whether there is secondary sexual characters or not if girls have secondary sexual normal uh, normal secondary sexual characters if the girls have normal secondary sexual characters then you'll have to uh, see whether you'll have to do an ultrasound scan and you'll have to see whether the uterus is present or absent uterus is absent and uterus is present if uterus is absent then you'll have to do a karyotyping once you do karyotyping it can be xx or xy if you find it has xx then it is a uh, uterus is absent so it is utero vaginal agenesis here in xy uh, uterus is absent so it can be androgen insensitivity just refer to my previous class you can understand a little more okay and if uterus is present then you will have to see uh, whether the outflow is normal or not it outflow is obstructed then you can uh, think that it is outflow obstruction then you'll have to see if outflow is normal outflow then you will have to see uh, about fsh or lh or prolactin these should be done if prolactin is increased 
then it is prolactinoma okay if fsh or lh are increased then it is early polycystic ovarian disease if lh is increased most commonly or it can be constitutional delay also so this is how you are going to treat you are going to diagnose the girls with normal secondary sexual characters if the girls have abnormal secondary sexual characters girls without normal secondary sexual characters in such cases you will have to see the height of the baby if height is height of the child if height is normal then you'll have to check about fsh if fsh is low then it is isolated gnrh deficiency because there is gnrh deficiency so fsh is not able to produce at all so fsh is low if fsh is high then it can be because of ovarian problems so that can be xx xy gonadal dysgenesis or it can be because of turner's mosaic okay if height is short then always think of fs uh, always do fsh again if fsh is low then it is hypothalamic or pituitary problems where fsh is not able to produce properly if fsh is high then it is turner syndrome because in turner syndrome there is no estrogen so there is pro, uh, activation of pituitary that will lead to increased fsh so this is how we diagnose the secondary amenorrhea and treatment of secondary amenorrhea it is based on the cause okay i, uh, I think you have understood the low high method but i would like to just uh, tell you something so that it becomes easier for you there is hypothalamus this hypothalamus will produce gonadotropin releasing hormone this will activate pituitary so this pituitary will produce fsh or lh this will activate ovary this will produce estrogen okay this leads to secondary sexual characters i have already written this once uh, before but ha huh, if estrogen if 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 gnrh is decreased or pituitary problems in such situation there is decreased fsh or lh then that is one and second thing which you have to remember is whenever estrogen is decreased decreased estrogen this decreased estrogen will activate pituitary gland because body thinks that there is no estrogen as a result this will activate pituitary this will lead to increased fsh this is how this classification works i think you have got a little idea about it so thank you guys for watching my lecture in my next class i will try to explain about uh, uh, one more topic uh, secondary amenorrhea because we have learned about primary amenorrhea right now in our next class we will learn about secondary amenorrhea so thank you guys for watching my lecture and Thank you.